be Bush administration's assault on the law of the United States has been so thorough and so complete that it is not law to keep you out of jail. There is no law that says they cannot, that the president cannot arrest you and hold you indefinitely at this point. There's only the political reality that mass arrests would, uh, would overturn the table as it were. And so what we're seeing more than that, more than the National Defense Authorization Act prosecution, is more of the same sort of uh, conspiracy and terror prosecution that has seen, for instance, the Holy Land Five here in Dallas sent a prison for shipping food and diapers and these sorts of things to Palestine on the theory that uh, that they were, in, by doing this, uh, assisting, uh, I suppose, terrorist babies. And we're seeing, of course, more of that and a continuous flood of that. A, a Somali woman recently sentenced to, respectively, a life sentence. And one of the uh, pieces of evidence used to convict her of terrorism was that she had clicked like on a certain Facebook page. So very minimal evidence of sin to non-existent um, terror plots or terror involvement uh, resulting in effectively life and sentences. So we are seeing in the United States, in contrast to Guantanamo Bay, we are still seeing the formalities of the law observed, even as those formalities count for less and less. But I think one thing that we can't say is that Guantanamo is the future. That the, what we think of as, as our constitutional rights are things which Americans didn't really, couldn't really count on as rights in 1890 or 1900 or 1910, and which have existed in their present form really only since the war in court. The Supreme Court in the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s made a series of rulings expanding into their rights. And we're seeing that hold back and going away and a return to the old days before that where the Constitution really doesn't give you any rights at all. And Guantanamo, Guantanamo is just a signpost that shows where we're going. We're standing in front of what I think is an obscene memorial to an obscene president, a man who was morally, intellectually, and temperamentally unfit to hold the office that he held. But the fact of the matter is that when he left and was replaced by a man who nobody can deny is much more talented, it didn't really make all that much of a change in the direction that the country was headed in because it is not about the individual that is in charge, but about the process that is moving forward as a 